Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever Stardew video. I've never made a video for this game before, but I had an idea yesterday and I wanted to... That was rude. And I wanted to test it out. So I've been playing Stardew for a long time. This file specifically has about 100 hours of playtime on it, and I've kind of hit the end game, but I have a bit of a problem. See, I care a lot about maintaining the comfortable, relaxing feeling of Stardew, so I don't use a lot of items like the Return Scepters or the Obelisks. Stuff like that always felt like it was going against the spirit of Stardew. But I kind of wanted to test that out, sort of see what it's like to play on a farm where you don't care about the spirit of Stardew at all, you care only about making money. But I couldn't do it on my playthrough, that would ruin it. This world had a lot of work put into it and I don't want to ruin anything I've built. Restarting from zero would take a really long time to get back to where we are. I'm in year five, as I mentioned. So to expedite the process, I'm going to duplicate this save and we're going to transform this farm into a soulless money-making factory. Unfortunately, our farmer right now doesn't quite have the right look, so we're gonna go to the wizard's tower and change his appearance. So after a lot of tinkering, I finally successfully duplicated the save. And as you can see, I've changed his name to Beth Jezos of Amazon Farm. And actually that also changed my pet's name, so I think I accidentally did this, but that's kind of fitting. Credit to Spiffing Brit for the name. This video linked above where he turned one of his farms into a money-making factory was part of the inspiration for this video. My second bit of inspiration was a series by the YouTuber Easy Lily, where she tries to become the first billionaire in Stardew Valley. So I've linked both those videos and their channels in the description below. This feels so weird to do because I've put so much uh, work into this farm, but the original still exists, so I'm not actually destroying anything. Get rid of this. Will it allow me to destroy this building? I don't know if I've removed all the slimes. Okay, yep, I must have. I just come down here to get going, and I've just had a thought. I wonder if it would be quicker to remove this stuff using bombs. Like, does this destroy... Oh, that's so much quicker, okay. Because step one is uh, just like getting rid of everything on the farm, and there's like a billion trees. I think I'll turn the rest of this into a time lapse, since most of this is just going to be blowing stuff up, and I'll be back when I'm done. What have I done to my farm? <laughs> I've left this little area up here for uh, kegs in the future because we're having a lot more sheds. I'm gonna actually just extend this all the way to the wall. So this area is already kind of taken up. That leaves us with all this area here. And I've also left this little planter up here where I had some ancient fruit growing, just because we're gonna need a lot of that for when we make these huge farms down below. Before we get started on the farm, there's one thing I want to do really quick. I don't think Beth Jezos is a man of decoration. I think he's a man of industry. So we're gonna make some aesthetic changes to the house really quick. Welcome to the Jezos Dungeon. This felt much more fitting for what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be adding extra rooms and uh, filling them with different things, but this suited the vibe of what we're going for a little bit better. I think the first step, for now at least, is to get the sheds moved next to each other. I can't do that today because I spent a little bit too much time on the uh, dungeon in there. But the second step is to start getting seeds, ancient fruit seeds, and planting them as soon as possible so that they have some time to grow. This year we won't have the best harvest, but next year when we can plant on the first of spring, we'll be able to get a lot more out of our harvest. But just getting it down now will be a huge help. Alrighty, we've got all of the ancient fruit that I was able to make down. I had a few extra sprinklers down here that I threw down without really thinking about the fact that we didn't have enough ancient fruit to fill it up, so that was kind of a waste of fertilizer, but I'm sure we'll get more soon. So now we've got a couple of jobs. Tomorrow we gotta move the other shed over here, and then we gotta start planning on making new sheds and new casks, which will be expensive. And after that we can start working on making some wine. Oh, every time I go to every time I go to bed, <laughs> his little head is just like barely peeking over the covers. It makes me laugh every single time. Alright, bought myself my first item that I never used in my normal playthroughs, the Return Scepter. 
Got that from Krobus. I was, I'm going to check him every so often to see if he's selling Iridium Sprinklers. That's where I got all my current ones. Uh, the rest we can just make, though. But for the next little bit, I'm kind of just going to be sleeping away the days, waiting for everything to grow up and for the sheds to be finished. Alrighty, so some progress has been made on our little empire here. We've almost got this one filled up with kegs. We're just waiting on some oak resin over here. We were able to extend this a little bit farther, so we're going to get a lot more per harvest. And then down here, I've been able to finish our big ancient fruit field. We'll extend this as we go. Um, right now, we're kind of bleeding money a little bit. We started with 2 million, now we're all the way down to uh, 900,000. Problem is, is that we're not really producing anything. All of the ancient fruit that we've gotten has been turned into seeds except for this 12. And even now, we still need to take about uh, 400 or so ancient fruit and keep it for seeds for next year. That way we can replant this whole field when the next year starts, and everything after that point we can start turning into wine. But yeah, there's not really too much else to do right now. We're just going to be sleeping away the days, waiting until everything sort of finishes up, and uh, I'll let you know when some more progress has been made. I've gotten into a pretty good routine every day, so I'm going to show you guys really quickly how I've been playing out the last little bit. I left this by my door so that as I come home, it'll be ready and I can grab it before I go to bed. I have this obelisk. I really quickly check if that's there. Then check if these are done. Check if this is done. And then I walk down here. If nothing's done, I return home. And I just keep doing that in a big loop. These kegs here, every time I put fruit in kegs inside of the sheds, I put one out here to tell me when the ones inside are done. That way, when I come out every morning, I can really quickly sweep and check if any of the insides of the sheds are done. So I'm going to keep doing that for a little while, and I'll show you guys when everything's done. Alrighty, after a couple of good harvests, there was one where like the greenhouse, the top section, and the bottom section all finished at the same time, which got us to the uh, 400 an ancient seeds that we needed. So now we have the 800 seeds that we need for next season, which means the rest can all be turned into wine. So starting now, we're going to be producing a lot more money. I'm going to try and save all of the wine that we produce. I'm not going to sell it right away, and we'll see how much we can get in a single sell uh, when the next season starts. It's another morning, time to see how our empire is progressing. So as you can see, just by delaying the harvest of some of these fields by a day or two, um, I was able to make it so that everything finished on the same day. And this is great for us because one of the great things about ancient fruit is that it has a harvest cycle that is exactly the same as its wine cycle. So if you put an ancient fruit in a keg on the same day that you harvest it, they'll both finish on the same day. So what this allows us to do is harvest the entire field, turn it all into wine, sleep for seven days, and rinse and repeat. We're all about increasing efficiency here on uh, Amazon Farm, I forgot the name. <laughs> As you can see, we've been stockpiling way more ancient fruit than we can turn into wine. And I'll do some calculations to figure out exactly how many sheds we'll need, but we're getting pretty close to when the last harvest is gonna happen. It's already fall and we're getting close to the end of the month. Pretty soon we're gonna lose all these fields. And I've got a plan for what we're gonna do in the winter. See, Beth Jesus is not happy with having to slowly harvest each one of these crops. It takes forever to empty this whole field. So I think we're going to need to get some employees. Already and the year is finally over. Well, at least the harvesting year. So we're going to wait a little bit longer for these last few bits of wine. All of the sheds are full right now. And then we're going to sell everything and see what this season got us. Now this season wasn't as profitable as the rest will be in the future because A, it took us a long time to get all the ancient fruit ready. And B, we didn't have all the sheds that we could have had in order to turn more of the ancient fruit into wine. So there is definite room for improvement. However, I think this is a pretty good baseline. It'll give us an idea of how much we've improved when we add everything else in. So I'll meet you in seven days when everything's ready to sell. Alrighty, here we are in winter. We're just about to sell all of the wine. This is how much we got in the short period that we were working. It's going to be quite a bit more once we've expanded our farm a little bit. 
But I think this is a pretty good place to start. But I mentioned earlier that we don't want to be doing this manually anymore. It's pretty tedious to be going through the fields alone, harvesting everything. It takes a while. So what we're going to do is hire some employees. And by employees, I mean the Junimos. Junimo huts require star fruit, which is the most expensive thing that they need. Um, I did a calculation for how many we need and I've already forgotten. Um, let's just buy a bunch. So we're gonna get rid of some of the crops in our greenhouse. Um, we got enough ancient fruit, it's not that big a deal. We can always replant it. We're gonna plant the star fruit, use it to make some Junimo huts, and let the Amazon employees do their work. Nice. I wasn't sure how much, whether the uh, number was gonna go off the end or not, but yeah, 5,700,000. Pretty decent for our first go. Hey, and there we go. Look at that. New achievement. 10 million. Yeah, we went we kind of rocketed past that milestone, but that's just a, a day in the life of Beth Jezos. But Starfruit and Junimo Huts aren't the only thing that we've got to work on during the winter. Um, as I mentioned, we still need the sheds, which for one means we need to be constantly going to Robin to buy new sheds to place on the farm. But it also means that we need to be buying copper and iron as well because we don't have enough for all of the casks that we're going to be building especially if we're going to have like seven or eight more sheds so i'm going to be grinding a little bit that seven million is going to pretty much get eaten up pretty quickly um but you got to spend money to make money right We finally have our first employees. Unfortunately, due to the placement of these uh, scarecrows, I had to place the three that I bought in kind of a weird orientation here. In the future, we're gonna have three per level. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three is the idea at least. We won't be able to see them until the summer, but now that we've done this, weirdly, my bottleneck is actually fiber. Um, I have enough uh, star fruit for quite a few more. Um, we'll have to make some more, but uh, fiber is actually the issue. I thought I had like a billion of these, but I must have accidentally sold a bunch when I downgraded my original farm. So we're gonna have to do some work there. Maybe we'll plant some uh, fiber up here in the, in the uh, summer. I moved the sheds over here to give space for the Junoma huts because I thought they were much bigger than this. Um, but they don't even come past the uh, pathway here, so I don't know, maybe I'll move them back where they were originally. But now that we're done that, all that we're waiting for is more oak resin for uh, kegs inside of the sheds. We still have two sheds to fill, but we should have that mostly done by the time spring rolls around, and we will be ready to sprint through another year and see how much we can produce. Jeff Jesus was very displeased with his previous farm layout. Um, I'm much happier now. I spent some time organizing everything. There were some real inefficiencies in the way that I was laying everything out. So uh, up here, this is just uh, fiber for uh, Junimo huts in the future since we don't have any extra. But I was able to move everything out of the way and fix everything up uh, as you saw in that little time lapse there. Uh, we've got all of our sheds in a line here. The Junimo huts are spaced perfectly so that they cover the whole field. There are some missing ones here, obviously, since we don't have them all yet. But we were actually able to organize this in a way where everything fits together and uh, we don't have that bar in the middle using up space. And then we've also got space, obviously, to keep extending sheds if we want to. Um, and then we can also put some, if we run out of space somehow, down here. But we should have enough sheds uh, for this because we're only going to be producing a little bit more than we were before. This should all be nice and efficient, ready for spring, which is very close. So I'm going to sleep a couple of days and we should be ready to start planting for next year. And we'll, uh, we'll burn through that year see how much we can produce. It's finally the first of spring. I just spent a little while cleaning up all the debris that spawned, uh, which was actually kind of nice because I got 64 fiber for it, which we were in need of. Um, we should have enough when this grows up, but it's nice to have a little bit extra now. I can try and buy some more Junimo huts, but now we just got to do the, uh, the tedious process of filling this all up. Do you hear that? 
That sounds like employees at work. Yes, finally. I feel like it took forever for this field to grow. Like, I'm already almost, I'm almost on spring, and it's just now finishing up. I did miss one day at the beginning because I made a, a very silly mistake. On the first of spring, I didn't have all of my uh, super speed grow or whatever it's called, speed grow deluxe, uh, to, to make these grow faster. So I, I waited one extra day. I figured that would be better to, to wait a day to make sure this all grew at the same time. Employees at work. So many happy employees. This came at a good time too, because we are completely out of ancient fruit. Um, I kind of used up a lot of our ancient fruit by accident. As you can see, I was trying to get 800 for our next planting for the next season, um, and I was just watching a YouTube video and just completely mindlessly used it all up, so we have like no ancient fruit left. What little we had left after I realized my mistake, I kind of already threw in, in some kegs here, so we're waiting on that to, to come through, but we're... Uh, we're just gonna wait for these guys to work and we should be good to start cranking out the uh, the numbers here. Getting through this year nice and quick now that everything's all done and seeing how much we can get at the end of winter. You know, I was a bit worried about using the Junimos before. Every resource online said that the Junimos were way too slow to use in big crop farms like this. Um, but I guess because I have so many huts per you know square foot, like these overlap. This one overlaps pretty significantly with here, so Junimos can work in both fields. And it was like 12 or something when they finished harvesting the whole field, so definitely reasonable. Whenever, whenever there's a day like this, I can just hop off, focus on getting all the stuff in the greenhouse and over here, and by the time I'm done, I'm not gonna have to wait too long before the Junimos are done. Down here, you can see how much we get from the field. That comes out to 790 if you add them all up together, which is pretty much dead on what we were looking for. So as you can see, the year is finally over. It's the 28th of winter. So right here is how much we were able to make. It was 10 and a bit stacks of ancient fruit wine. We've got this for replanting next year. We got 58 star fruit wine from the extra bit of star fruit we had from the Junima huts. Uh, I've started collecting diamonds as well. I feel like uh, I have enough jades. I've got over a hundred. And then we were able to do two full harvests of the ancient fruit from the cellar. Uh, we've just got a little bit more cooking downstairs I'm gonna leave. But we have nothing else we need to do today. So it's seven in the morning. I'm gonna sell all this. We're gonna go to sleep and see what we've made. <laughs> there we go. The numbers are a little bit longer than this. It doesn't quite show up. I think that's 14 million. Yeah, because usually when you sell this much, you get one number knocking off here. The fact that they're still moving means that there's a, a number missing. Here are all the prices of everything if you want to take a quick look. This was really impressive. I didn't expect this to sell for so much. I only started doing this like at the end of fall. So uh, if we had been doing this the whole uh, year, we would have been able to get quite a, quite a bit more money. Whoa. <laughs> Jesus, I think it was more than I expected. Look at that. Okay, so I just did a quick calculation since we couldn't tell how much we actually made. The total for the whole year was $24,820,260, which is absolutely absurd. So we're definitely gonna be buying some stuff, um, namely the golden clock. I'm tired of getting rid of all this debris on the farm every uh, season, but that was a pretty good year. I think we're gonna leave it there for uh, this video. If you guys have any ideas for what you think Beth Jesus would like to do in Stardew, Feel free to leave a comment, I'd love to hear you guys' suggestions. But that aside, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day!